One, two, three. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Rich Boy Jay and Garrett Bricks. And today we're showing you our crate mod. We've been working on this thing for about six months now. We started in January and we have been building it for this convention here at Brick Fiesta in San Antonio. And this is the culmination of many long nights of hard work, many brick link orders, many pick a brick orders, many runs across the city to go to a Lego store and um, a lot of very fun build streams on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So I guess we can start over here in this area. You guys have seen the ATM6, and that was um, probably the biggest, my biggest contribution to this. Obviously, it's a 16,000 piece build. There are many of these in the actual scene from the movie. Um, I thought one of them should be sufficient, and it, most people feel that same way as well. It's quite a large build, but if we move back around here, we can actually show you guys the custom Kylo Ren command shuttle that Garrett did. If you want to detail that a little bit. Yeah, so it's a uh, minifig scale, or as, at least as close as you can really get with minifigures. Uh, I've been working on this, trying to get the design down for a few months. I was really wanted to have the wings able to be, uh, be angled like that, like it is in the movie. They're very heavy, and uh, they, it, it works for what it, it needs to be. I wanted to get that, the skinny wings, but still be strong enough. Like There's Technic running through all of them to keep it kind of as flat as possible while keeping it skinny and having that, that, that really sleek profile that the ship has. Do you yeah. want to show the uh, cockpit? Yeah, so you can uh, take the front off here. And you got uh, some pilots and stuff in there. Kylo Ren's there with uh, Hux. He's about to throw him against the wall <laughs> and uh, throw a fit of rage when the, when the Millennium Falcon flies by. There you go, yeah. And so one thing I noticed here is uh, you've got a lot of exposed studs, which I feel like in recent years, you know, is not as common in Lego building. So was that on purpose, or did you just not want to invest in all the tiles that you'd have to cover so up with? It, 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 part of it was budgetary. I, there's a lot more tiles on the outside, and that's because the, the outside of the wings are going to be most what's displayed. Today, since the wings are spread out, the, the inside of the wings is a lot more exposed than it, it will be. Ideally, I would love to have it all tiled up. Kylo's shuttle is, thankfully, uh, if you look at the design of it, it's kind of splotchy in a ways. It looks like there's a bunch of, like, kind of alternating squares and stuff. It's not like completely smooth, so it works. Um, it's not ideal. I would have loved to have tiled up the whole thing, but the the outside of the wings, which is the main thing, is uh, is where all, most of the tile, well, most of my tile money went. And then you've got it held up with some nice pick brick cups there, so that works well. This is purist. These are Lego <laughs> products. This was actually, it was a last minute thing. We had no idea how we were gonna, we wanted it to obviously be suspended somehow because it's flying in the movie. On day two, we'll have it landed. But so for today, we were thinking, originally we might we were gonna try to support it through the middle, support the body up. The wings are just way too heavy for that. If you try to lift it up by the body, the wings just kind of fall down. That's why the cups are supporting the wings. The body is really what's being held up. Okay. But it was really a last minute thing. We It was like two days ago, maybe. We put the cups down, set it down, we were like, hey, it holds up. They're clear. They kind of blend with the white. I think it, it, the look of it, I think it works. Right, yeah. It's, it's all very familiar. And speaking of tiles, this is the first order ATAT. -AT. So if you guys remember the Scarif mock that Garrett and I did, this was an ATACT. -AT. We have converted it to the ATAT -AT version for the first order. So there are a few minor things that got switched up. And honestly, um, I'm hoping this is not a continuing trend because I'm tired of building new walkers. Um, it's, I'm hoping especially that the ATM-6 shows up in another movie so I get at least a little bit more mileage out of it than just this. But if it doesn't, I won't be too mad. This is a great mock, I hope, and hope you guys will enjoy it as well. Yeah. So one of the first things we actually started on with this mock is the salt pattern. And that was something that I think that was distinctly crate. Like, you don't see that too often in Star Wars movies, so it was very pivotal that we got that correct. So we went through a bunch of different ideas for techniques. I think the first one we kind of had our eye on was the snot technique using kind of like um, plates and uh, curved slopes on the side to kind of create cracks but upon closer inspection we realized that the um, the ground it's not actually cracks in the ground they aren't crevices instead they're actually like salt clusters so they should be protruding from the ground which kind of influenced our decision to decide to go with like the stud to create somewhat of a honeycomb pattern actually to get um, the aesthetic of crate and it actually turned out pretty well it was something that we kind of jumped into we like ordered a lot of the parts that we needed for it hoping that it would look good and it actually ended out ended up turning out pretty well so we were happy happy about that. Um, Doing it that way too helped us because we were able to do like the footprints and the trails and stuff. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to include those. So okay. having like the the big red exposed, doing it the way we did, was a lot easier to have those kind of uh, 
have those in the mock in various places. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the things I did want to highlight, at this point, having been working on it for so long, it's something we take for granted. But we used a lot of red slopes on the edges of the mock to kind of create a border around it. And the idea was to kind of have it be a cutout, like a cross section of the ground on crate. Obviously, it's a salt planet. Um, and below it is kind of a red dirt. And that's what we used to uh, to kind of recreate that kind of aesthetic and just make it look a little bit better around the edges. Didn't want to just have it be flat bricks or anything like that. And I think that it adds so much to the mock. It's almost like a border that goes around it and it just it draws your attention automatically to it. So it's something we spent a lot of time on and I think seeing it all finally together, it was well worth investing in a bunch of slopes that we otherwise wouldn't have really needed to put into the mock. It's like a big slice of cake, you know? It's like it's like sliced right out of the planet. You know, you got the nice like velvety kind of, kind of border around it. It's great. That's a good Absolutely. way to describe it. Um, so one thing we did want to show you guys is over here, we have the footprints with the troops marching in. And this is something that I feel everyone notices and it pops out because obviously, you know, it's little cute footprints for Lego guys. So people really get a kick out of that. So that was really fun to do. And this was one of the first things we actually did on the mock. And like once we finished this up, we were so excited to kind of move forward because like I think I posted a picture on Reddit of just the foot, like the guys walking in the footprints. And it's probably like the 12th most upvoted post on the Lego Reddit page so um, it's funny how that works out um, but yeah it, it turned out pretty well I think and um, the crate just lends itself so well to Lego the contrast between the red and white with the footprints or the blast or the crevices like it, it all just works so well together so I'm happy about that it's so true yeah so then we'll move around to this side and see what else we can we can take a look at here Kind of we when we were building this we went from the back here and then built all the way to the front so the cave was the last thing we did so footprints was obviously the first thing we worked on the second thing was the crash tie fighter and so it was our first time really doing something different other than just doing the same uh, salt pattern over and over again so I don't know if uh, from the trailer for anyone who remembers the trailer for the last Jedi there was a scene in it where a tie fighter crashes into the ground it like hits and the wings break off and it like rolls around. Um, obviously, we started building, we started planning this even before the movie came out, and by the time we were starting working on it, even up to this point, the movie wasn't out on DVD yet. So we were watching like the trailers and stuff just over and over and over again, trying to find little details of Crate. There, were, there really wasn't a whole lot of like promotional footage for Crate out there. It was more like a lot of drawn out shots and stuff. But one of those shots was the TIE fighter crashing and two of the speeders kind of going around it that way. So we're like, we'll definitely include that. And I just love the way, I mean, we wanted to, for sure, because it's obviously a battle going on, so we have various battle damage stuff, and that's obviously the biggest one of that. So the ties kind of has like an impact crater where it landed and kind of and then rolled the wings all lift uh, debris behind and stuff and then the the tie pilots obviously uh, are safe and unharmed and they're about to call AAA to have someone come uh, come help them out there i love the wing planted into the the surface like that that's really neat as well yeah it because we needed some way for it to kind of be propped up so it wasn't just a bunch of flat pieces kind of behind it and it, i think you know it's it, it adds to it it's very clearly a crash the wings just kind of jutted there and maybe rolled a bit or just like stabbed into the dirt one more thing I did want to add is that everything in LEGO is always kind of built at 90 degrees one way or another, and I feel it makes the world of difference having that wing at a slight angle because people see it and it's unconventional. It looks different for LEGO, and I, that was one of the things I really wanted to do when I was building that, you know, add a little differentiation to it from just the typical, like, building techniques, techniques that people would use with LEGO. Um, so the next thing we can kind of highlight were the, um, the ski speeders and the dust clouds that they kick up. So one of the most important things for us to do was to recreate the dust clouds that these ski spears kick up. And this was something that we were totally dreading because dust isn't really an obvious thing to recreate in Lego. Like you'd have to think about it to be like, like what does this actually look like? Um, and we went with a bunch of curved slopes and you can see it kind of bubbles up towards the back. And it's kind of cartoony, but I feel it's sometimes that's necessary in Lego to give a more obvious representation of what you want to build. And like when people see this, like they automatically know like, oh, that's the dust cloud. So it worked out pretty well in our favor. And I think, you know, it, it really pops and, um, it just adds to the kind of the flavor of crate with um, having more like big red type of contrast with the salt flats. So I like the way that those came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the lines in the the salt there as well just works really well. Like you, like you mentioned earlier with Lego, I think it lends itself really nicely to creating those patterns. Right. Yeah. You you would honestly be surprised with how many people have asked us if we like took a knife and like cut tiles to get those <laughs> shapes. But no, those are all Lego pieces, and we like creatively use the different uh, degrees of the wedge plates to create round curves that lend themselves to natural looking lines that will be formed by these ski speeders flying all across it. So we wanted to leave a nice like open area to have these lines because 
once the battle is over and done with, like that's so that's one of the most identifying factors of Crate, all those lines being left in the ground. So that was one of the most important things for us in designing it, so make sure we got that right. Mm -hmm. We also had to plan, and we, we drew that out actually because each every section is independent, and obviously the lines were going to cross multiple sections. So we actually drew out, and that was kind of a pain, making sure everything was lining up correctly, like putting the base plates next to each other when we were building, making right. sure nothing was, you know, making sure it would all line up, and the logic of it would kind of make sense. Right. Yeah. And then the other thing was also just making sure, like even in the contained canon of the mock, that everything kind of flowed well. So you'll notice all the lines start somewhere and end somewhere, and there's a ski speeder that kind of created it. They aren't just random, but they were actually thought through, and we made sure that like every ski speeder started at some place. So this one starts here. That this one actually started on that side and curves around. That one crashed over there, started right here, and then that one over there started right over here. So everything kind of makes sense in the in terms of the mock, and it's something that really wouldn't mean anything to the normal person, but for us, it makes sense and it's correct, and that's what we try to do with anything that we build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it works really well then. So if we keep making our way down here, I think we hit the trench scene. Yes. Um, the trenches were something that we both were just so excited to work on. Um, it's honestly influenced the entire mock being elevated. Um, so we, because of that, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't done for nothing. We wanted to make sure the trenches look good since it like cost us so much more money in bricks to have the whole thing elevated. And um, there's so many different details we put in. Namely, if you look like in the ground, there's like the, the great sections and there's the... Um, uh, dark gray curved tiles in there and it's something that's kind of trivial but like having them all together makes it look distinctly like the grates in the ground and then there's just all types of pipes and tubing and things like that that go throughout the entire trench and all together it creates a very awesome aesthetic and anyone who's seen The Last Jedi will see this and immediately know exactly like what's going on in this scene so that was a lot of fun and then I think Garrett did an excellent job lining up all the figures you can kind of take him through the scenes in that. Yeah, so I'm obviously on Crate they had the big trench and everyone was lined up, guns out, ready to get blasted by the First Order. Um, we we made a we we took like some care and we didn't want just the same minifigures placed over and over again. So we definitely we switched around faces. We tried to put as many unique hair and face combos as possible. We even recreated a lot of people. Uh, a lot of when our, for our live streams, we have all of our moderators. We recreated sig figs for them and threw them in the mock. And some of our friends, like myself and Jalen, are actually right here. Well, that's awesome. So you included your own figures. Yeah, that's really we got cool. a promotion from the Lego store. There's a there's a, there's a ton of we have a, a, a ton of cameos and other figures of people from from the actual movie itself and other Lego YouTubers and like I said, our, moder our moderator team is there. Uh, probably the most recognizable scene with the figures is going to be the General Emmett standing up there with the binoculars. He kind of everyone was kind of hiding behind the trenches and he just stood up and looked out. I always got the I always got the impression that he was a veteran of the Battle of Hoth. He was like, it's just a bunch of big walkers, like we've seen this before. And so he steps out, there's some footprints behind him and then a little behind him is the guy that picked up the salt and tasted it and okay. said, oh, this is salt. It's not snow, guys, it's salt. And then right next to him was Gareth Edwards, the director of Rogue One. That was his cameo in the movie. So we were like, okay, well, he'll be in the mock too, right there where he is in the movie. So then the next part of this were the turrets and these were honestly pretty difficult to build because there aren't any great shots of them in the movie. What I actually ended up having to do was play Star Wars Battlefront and like run around to like all sides of this to like <laughs> take pictures on my phone of the screen. And let me, I'm going to take you on a little story. So EA, if you're listening right now, please make Crate a map that you don't have to play on multiplayer to access the outside. I cannot tell you the amount of times I was running around, minding my own business, just trying to take pictures, and people were trying to kill me. <laughs> how, is, how am I supposed to make LEGO Star Wars mocks when people online want to kill me? So It's hard to get the source material when you're being shot at. Exactly, yeah. Like honest, Honestly, I went through some things, man. It, it was not a good time. But I made it through, I persevered, and I converged on a pretty good looking t uh, turret design, I think. No thanks to you, Star Wars Battlefront players. But anyways, um, these things were actually pretty cool. I thought that like the design, it just pops. It's like not dark gray, it's not white, it's not red. They really pop out because they're such different colors, especially with the orange stripes that go around it. And it was actually designed to be modular, so the entire thing comes apart. Um, Father Time wasn't feeling us though, so we didn't really have the opportunity to finish it all up. But you can actually see that there is space to have an interior if we decided to do that. And of course, there's different minifigures and such lining up throughout the turrets, um, just helping out, doing their part in the large battle. So, well, well 
Now, with these minifigures here, uh, or any you know, kind of the build in general, do you guys use any third-party elements that kind of add little details to the minifigs and details of the build, or is this all just normal Lego pieces? This is all normal Lego. Okay. This is all purist. We pride ourselves on that. Um, I think if we really want it, we could invest in custom weapons, but there's just so many figures that it would become more pricey than it's worth, in my opinion. We, we have a ton of just Lego blasters in general because we're big Lego Star Wars collectors, so it's just something that we have there ready to go. And I think the blasters are pretty, I mean, like all the all the resistance figures have the like the more like the gunmetal gray ones because that's what they come with in the Lego sets and the stormtroopers have the plain black ones which is more. So that's that's accurate enough for us I think. That's it gives the idea across of what the guns are supposed to be. Um, so next we have we'll the do, mountains. Uh, the, we'll show off oh, the yeah. tunnels real quick. One last thing with the with the trenches yeah. here. We can actually uh, pop up some of these sections here. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so you've got insides there. Yeah, so these will come up. There's also this one over here. I'll try to this one. So we have these on both sides, actually. It's uh, pretty much the same. If you imagine, just mirror it on the other side. But we kind of wanted logic to flow with the, the trenches here. So you can... Imagine them running from the base through the trenches and then out here to get to the to the trench to get ready to to die basically get blasted no. get blasted by a bunch of ATM sixes. They re the resistance didn't last very long. They tried, but they didn't last very long. No, that's such a great element of the build. That extra detail, obviously, I mean, because the trenches would be underneath there, so it makes sense. Exactly. But actually, building that in is so cool. We had a lot of fun doing that. I mean, like we ever since we, ever since we started, we knew the trenches were going to be our most thing. We were it was really the thing we were looking forward to most, being able to design the trenches and kind of have that like have that logic flowing with it. Like, okay, so where are they going to enter in? Where's the tunnels going to be? Where are they going to come from from the base? and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, so next we can actually go ahead and look at the rock work. This was something that we spent a lot of time on. Um, we both basically picked one side of the rocks and we just built them up ourselves to try to get them to a certain height. We used um, a big combination of like the dark gray, big slopes, the white ones in that same color, the red ones as well, just kind of having like the, the dirt color popping through. And I think they all kind of culminate to create a pretty good representation of what you see on Crate. It's not one obvious color, it's a really combination of all of them. So we tried to make that as natural as possible with Lego. And then the other thing is obviously the big door that keeps the bad guys out. And you can see that we wanted to recreate its kind of rusted color. That's why we chose dark tan. And I think that worked pretty well. And one of the things that was like kind of something we took for granted when we started designing it, but we really realized it was important to do was actually have the angle right here bevel at the bottom and there are no reverse slopes in that color nor that size that specific angle so we had to take the regular slopes fix, um, flip them upside down and then try to like connect them and have it work seamlessly so it's it's pretty complicated but I think it worked out pretty well so one thing we'll show you before we go into the inside is back on the other side come around and check this side out so there's this big hatch. In the movie, the ski speeders actually come out of the hatch, and that's how they make it to the battlefield. So if you'll notice, the lines that start right here, it's from the ski speeders that flew out from the door. And you can see we actually have a cameo from one of the biggest stars in Hollywood right now, Vin Diesel from Fast and the Furious, also known as Dominic Toretto. He's hijacking the ski speeder, and he's doing one of his many crazy stunts. So um, we wanted to show some appreciation to um, a globally renowned film franchise. And I think that we faithfully, we did it justice. So I'm happy about that. There you go. I think you guys did well. So we come around here, and you've got some kind of like Easter eggs hidden in the side then? Yes. So um, I'll start around this side. This is the one that I kind of built up. Okay. Um, you can see that I got a scene from everyone's favorite Star Wars movie, Attack of the Clones. When they go through the droid factory, you got the Geonosian popping out of the wall, about to attack them. So that was pretty cool. That's to the do. height of filmmaking right there. It really is. Honestly, that movie might just be as good as Fast and Furious. But if we move down here to the command room, um, this is one of the funnest parts of the mock, just because we spend so much time in here in the movie, got the lights as well. If you'll pan out for a second, there's actually an access door that we um, put in there to actually just access the lights and turn them on and off, so don't have to tear the mock apart to do that. Mm -hmm. um, pretty cool idea, I thought. Shout out to Brick Plumber for that. But this was so fun to do. There's Leia back there, obviously sitting on her chair, giving out orders and some other... Um, important characters from the movie and there was no like one shot of this room that made it really convenient to make this so I had to do some guesswork and get a lot of different angles from the movie to make this again possible and if you actually look to the left in that cave right there you'll see a familiar face Mr. Luke Skywalker 
coming through and trying to save the day. So it's um, something that you wouldn't really notice unless you looked hard, but the payoff is really good because it's like, oh, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Everyone wants to see him. So we'll um, take you around to the other side, then we'll come back yeah, into here. Okay. This is more of the same kind of layout from that side. It's the side of the mountain here kind of cut out. There's a few rooms here. We got a, a Minecraft room here. It, you know, we were doing these little hidden caves, and the first thing I thought of when I thought of caves and what kind of Easter eggs to include was Minecraft, yeah. and Le uh, Lego makes Minecraft sets, so worked out really well. We got a, this room down here. This is kind of a, the, this would be like a uh, kind of locked off closed room. We decided to put a lot of Easter eggs and references. We call this the fan appreciation room. This was, uh, there's a lot of just in jokes and stuff referencing uh, a lot of people that watch our live stream. So that was kind of, we put that there for, to, uh, for their appreciation. A lot of in jokes that no one else, I won't go into explaining any of them because no one will find them funny. I will say shout out to Drink Tea. That's what that is. Over here we have another room, uh, just with a little Darth Maul cameo. I've noticed that Darth Maul makes a lot of cameos in Star Wars mocks. He also makes a lot of cameos in Star Wars movies and Star Wars TV shows, maybe where he might not necessarily belong. So there he is, he's running his criminal enterprise from a, from a dank cave. He's on just like Earth. brooding in the game. He is, I mean, he's Darth Maul, he's frustrated that he got cut in half, it's been years, and he's still around. He's, he's like, Disney just kill me off already. Just, just be done with me. <laughs> There's a room here, uh, just a little uh, one of the crystal foxes. Jalen did an awesome job whipping up those foxes. Uh, the uh, vault, vault Texas. Yeah, I know what they're called. There's a ton of them all throughout the mock. Uh, we how many? Maybe 25 of them. They're, they're all around. And then there's one last little tunnel here. It kind of you can kind of look through it, and it leads out into the main cave area. So one more thing I did want to show you guys. It's back over this way recreated one of the rooms from the crystal caves you can see that got some light bricks in there illuminating it got a miner who i guess got forgotten about rest in peace um, and a lot of those crystals just kind of protruding from the ground and that was actually a lot of fun to make just because that um i didn't really have to think too hard about it it was all natural so i can just you know build up whatever i wanted and um, anyone who plays a battlefront game would certainly know exactly what that is and get some appreciation out of that so that was a fun little room to whip up Mm -hmm. So now moving to the Grand Cave area, this is where it all goes down. First thing we'll highlight is the First Order shuttle that comes in. This is the one that Finn and Rose stole from the Supremacy. They pull in, well they don't really pull in, they crash in, and they're like telling people don't shoot, don't shoot, and then everyone down here is shooting at them. <laughs> you can see Leia even has her gun, and then here's Poe reuniting with his best friend. And um, this was so fun to do just because like, it, we got to recreate this whole little part of the movie and anyone who remembers it will know exactly what this is. And the other nice part was that this ship ends up like landing destroyed so I didn't have to build all of it. And I, it'd be nice if that happened more often. Um, <laughs> And also, we have the resistance shuttle that I designed over here. They take um, a few of these off of their ship in order to get onto this planet, so I thought that I'd put one of those in there as well. And if you'll look over there in that corner, that's actually a reference to the LEGO Star Wars video game. So anyone who remembers those knows that there's like buttons on the ground that you can use to access special rooms, so we thought that our fan appreciation room deserved um, some sort of, I don't know, like challenge to be able to get in. So that's what's going on over there. We got the third guy running up, about to step on his button, so they can get into there. Yeah, those frustrating buttons you always had to like move characters and everything and like position everyone exactly right. So yep, exactly. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So then um, up top we have the hangar section and this isn't actually something you see in the movie, but it's something we thought that made the most sense since we knew we were gonna have that ski speeder flying out of the door. It just made sense that you know there would be some sort of hangar for them to kind of get from inside of the base to the outside. So you can see there's the rebel logos on the ground because this is obviously an abandoned rebel base and we tried to you know recreate some of the familiar things you'd see that the rebels had and then of course like there's the guy seeing off his buddy onto the battlefield mm -hmm. yeah and then you even got some really impressive rock work on the inside here as well i'm sure after doing the the front mountain that wasn't difficult for you guys by that point yeah so that was the weird thing like we were i feel like before we got to any of this we were so excited because it's like it's like not salt anymore we get to like build stuff up and do rooms and then we started building rocks on the front and we were like okay it's so fun that we're done with that and then we didn't realize we had even more rocks to build on the inside so i think we're both done with rocks for quite some time but i think it all ended up working pretty well and i mean it really does a good job at recreating the entire aesthetic of the inside of the caves. So I think it was well worth it. And um, one of the other things that was actually kind of difficult to design was the door 
Obviously on the front, it's the dark gray slopes normally. On the back, it's kind of the same thing, but it's at a slant. So once again, there are no reverse slopes in dark gray, dark tan, I'm sorry. So I had to like flip those upside down and have those kind of all fit together and stay in there in order to recreate that look. So that was not easy at all, but it ended up working out pretty well. And I think that like if you go around the other side and you look here, you're like, oh, okay, like that looks like it all makes sense and fits together. So I like that a lot. Yeah, so that's incredible. That's the whole thing there. So uh, do you guys know how, how long this and how wide the whole thing is? So it's four base plates by nine gray base plates. Um, I think 16, what, feet. 16 feet by five, 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 five feet. Okay. So definitely the biggest thing we've ever built uh, <laughs> by far. Um, it was, it's been about maybe six months of work or so, another month before that of planning it out. And it's, it's definitely been a journey. We're both very happy and relieved to be done. Um, this is the last time it'll be displayed. We will, a lot of the things on here will be changing for day two, so I'm sure you guys will love to come back yeah. and check those out and we'll highlight those. So there's a few things that kind of change. Um, but yeah, it's been a journey, it's been fun, and, and I'm looking forward to hopefully outdoing this next year with, with my uh, friend Jalen here. There you go, yeah, great building duo here. As you guys work on this together, you, you both live in the same city, so were you in the same kind of physical spot building or would you build different sections then bring it all together? So we built all of this at his place. He had, okay. the, he had the space for it. It took up like half of a room. And we, we live in the same city. I live about, it's like a 35 minute drive, but I would still go up once or twice a week. We'd try to and work on it and just, you know, get it out, get it done. And it, obviously there was a lot of late nights and I think it was all worth it in the end. And then you guys mentioned a few times that you did a lot of this during YouTube live streams. So talk about kind of how that works and, you know, how you interact with other builders as you're, as you're kind of going through the process. Right, yeah. So I don't think it can be understated the amount of people we've been able to meet through this journey, specifically because we did do the live streams on YouTube. And it was started off as just something for us to do other than watching Star Wars movies because we got through, like, the four or five good ones and we decided we didn't want to punish ourselves. So we decided, let's do something else. Let's go ahead, hop on the live streams, and we can, you know, talk to people and give ourselves something to do that would kind of help pass the time when we're building monotonous things. I think honestly, like having to kind of like pay attention to the chat, which is something we prided ourselves on. We didn't want to be just, you know, a video happening of people building. We wanted to engage with people, start conversations, and build memories like the stuff that we could put into that fan appreciation room. But um, it kind of, I would say, slowed the building process just because we kind of had to split our time. But it ultimately made it more enjoyable for both of us because we weren't just mindlessly stacking bricks. So it was a trade off, but one I felt that was well worth it just because we got to not only meet so many people, but also create so many memories with people that we honestly may talk on like a daily basis to nowadays so it's pretty cool mm -hmm. that's great well then we'll come back tomorrow and see what you guys have changed up and what else you have to offer so thank you so much appreciate it awesome thanks guys okay so we're back for day two for the exciting conclusion of the crate build to see what uh, our two talented builders here have added to the build and changed up uh, for day two so if you guys want to start back here in the cave and then we'll move our way forward and see what's changed All right, actually I think we'll start on this side and then okay. we'll come right back around so the first thing I did want to show you guys is that we have probably the most heartwarming scene in The Last Jedi. We have Luke having his meeting with his sister Leia, handing her those gold dice, and um, seeing her for the last time uh, as, I guess, a physical like being. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, that was actually a really fun scene to replicate because I think that in the movie, like it's just a very beautiful scene, especially with the passing of Carrie Fisher. Um, I liked that we could kind of, you know, remove, remove everyone from this room, I guess, from, except for C-3PO, and then have those two having their moment. So I really do like that part of the mock and it holds a special place in my heart. It's, a, it's kind of like a tribute of this to Carrie Fisher. So I like that part of the mock. Uh, moving around to this side, we have the evacuation area. So obviously they're chasing the, well not really chasing the Voltexes, they're following the Voltexes to the outside of the mock. We got uh, a few of the main characters running after her, Poe's leading the way with BB-8, Leia of course is following behind. And then if you also check back here, it's kind of hard to see, but through there Kylo Ren is marching into the door with his snow troopers and they are looking for the resistance. There you go, yeah, some great then, added um, details. I actually did want to highlight this room. It's a little dark, but you can see that myself, Garrett, the Brick Wiz, and John Cena have all run up on Darth Maul. We got a few questions for him. We want to know why he's showing up in all of our movies. <laughs> Hopefully he has some answers for us. There you go. Very important scene there. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
All right, so then moving back over to the battlefield. So the battle is now over. You kind of look at the trenches. There's a lot of people. We'll say they're sleeping, um, taking a nap after a really hard-fought battle. Uh, the first order hit them pretty hard. So there's some. It just wears you out. It, it's a battle's hard, especially when you're facing overwhelming odds. Uh, so there's a lot of wipeouts in the trench. Uh, we got some like some smoke kind of billowing up. Mainly the uh, doorway there has been blown out. The battering ram cannon, which. It's not on our mock, we'll just pretend it's kind of behind a ways. It shot a big hole through the door, cracked it like an egg, so there's some smoke billowing up. Uh, a lot of where our, our speeders were before, you know, just weren't there anymore, so the, it'll either the trail will keep going. So before it was right here and the trail stopped, the trail kept going, we switched those out, so it's like the, kind of the continuation, they, they went off. Uh, this speeder did not make it that far, she had a bit of an issue there. And then uh, you can also notice the, the, other, the same with the speeders on the other side, they're not there anymore. Uh, probably the biggest change for today was uh, the classic scene, Luke and Kylo facing off. This was something that everyone is always asking when we set up this display. They say, well, where's Luke and Kylo? Well, here they are. It's day two. The battle's over, so now they're facing off. You can see the, the shuttle has now landed. Kylo got out. There's some, uh, some red behind him where he's walking. Notice there's no red around Luke. Uh, there's something going on there. No spoilers, of course. But they're about to face off. That's probably one of the best scenes in the movie, I think. He tosses his cape off and they have a, a confrontation. And that's kind of, I guess, the climax of the movie. So we definitely wanted to replicate that. It's really nice having the white just kind of around them. And they're kind of right smack dab center in the, of the mock with the, the, the giant shuttle behind it, kind of framing it all really well. So now the shuttle is on the ground. So did you have to switch anything up with the way that's supported since it's not up on the, the pick a brick cups any longer? Yeah, so I have some landing gears on it. They're just. Uh, these here, there's, they don't like go up or anything, so basically when we took it off of the cups and when they were flying, I removed the bricks that were kind of wedging the, the wings kind of in that angle. So just took those out and then I just have to kind of hold the shuttle upside down, put the landing gears on and then flip it back up and set it back down. It's all pretty sturdy so you can kind of move it around to get those under there, but it's just a matter of sticking those little guys there and it stands up on it. So if you come back to this side, you'll see we still have some troopers taking a nap, but namely there is Finn carrying Rose over back to the base. I'm sure people will have some opinions on that being in this mock. <laughs> and the other thing we wanted to highlight is that right on the front of the door, we actually had pop-out sections. So if you get up close, you can see that there's a hole that goes straight through the door to the inside of the base. And that's kind of what the First Order did to try to get into the base. And then that's where Luke makes his exit throughout the base to face down Kylo Ren. So that was one of the first things we decided we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure that once we switched this stuff out, we were able to complete the entire scene and have it look the way it does in the movie. So I'm happy that that actually worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I love the extra effort you guys went to to, to update it for day two here. I, the whole thing is just incredible. So what's your plans for the for the future with this build? You want to say, Jalen? <laughs> yeah, so after much deliberation, I think that we have gotten the most that we can possibly get out of this mock, and we probably are going to destroy it after this convention. We'll keep some of the bigger pieces like the walkers and the Kylo Ren command shuttle, but everything else we have no attachment to any longer and we're going to make it a lot easier to pack up. There you go. That should be fun to watch. <laughs> it served its purpose. It's time to go. One last thing, um, we wanted to give some special thanks to some very close friends who actually made it possible for us to get this here. I have our friend Mark and our friend Matt. These guys are BrickWiz and John Cena respectively on YouTube. Make sure you check them out. They gave us um, a lot of help with getting this thing together and it would not have been possible nor this easy without them. So shout out to those guys. There you go. You've always got the supporting team here. It always helps to have other people with you. When you have something this big, you really do. You need some help because, I mean, obviously when we were building it, we were planning on doing this eventually, and we never really thought, like, oh, we can handle it ourselves. And it wasn't until we actually had them with us and still barely kind of managing to get it here and managing to get it on time and finished in a working state. Really, it showed we did need some extra help there at the end. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Are ready? Get that hold of the door as well. All right. One, two.
Congratulations, boys. On to the next project. Cleaned up time very well. I mean. See, when we were, we we were it. during the interview, when we were talking about how easily it packs up, this is <laughs> yeah. Fun, uh, so um, yeah. We'll get to work re-putting so this back. So, crate is gone. Well, uh, we'll be well, most of the crate is gone. A couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's grown up. You guys are just <laughs> tuning in. We just destroyed half It actually all fell in a nice little mess. It was actually terrible. I was really worried it was going to be like, what? It was a live one moment. It was a live one moment. Quickly it turns. At a moment. It's a really efficient way to clean base plates. Really? Oh yeah. 